Hello, welcome back to Nexus Core. Uh, I'm Richard, and I'm going to be showing you my, <clears throat> excuse me, my Premium Ezel Deck version 2.0. So, uh, yeah. So this was basically uh, my version of the Gold Paladin deck um, after watching the World Championship 2018 live stream. So I kind of took the second place deck into consideration when making my deck, so here it goes. <laughs> Starter is obviously Crimson Lion Cub Kirif. This is the card that basically gives Gold Paladin that uh, fair advantage uh, in premium. So the card's effect is uh, if you have Bowmanes as your vanguard and you have Gareth on the rear, you move Kirif and Gareth into the soul in Superior Ride Ezel from your deck. So basically the way the deck works is you have to ride Bowmanes and then you just rush your opponent and then yeah, that's basically it. So this card is what allows you to do that. Um, uh, denying your opponent damage uh, so that they don't kill this with Blaster Dark is also really important because it has Forerunner. All right, on to the grade threes. So this grade three lineup is exactly like uh, the guy that got second place at Worlds. So three Ezel, uh, only three because uh, your goal is just to superior ride and that's about it. So. Uh, trying to uh, make room for the other grade threes because the other grade threes are what kind of do stuff on the rear guard circles anyways. Uh, also, you never use Ezel's uh, skills. Either one, you just basically are riding him for the name and the gift. So Ezel's skill is uh, when it's in your hand, if you have Bone Mains uh, and Gareth on your van or rear, you can Soul Blast, Kira from your soul, and you ride it as stand. And if your opponent's vanguard is grade two or less, this gets drive minus one. And then when it attacks, uh, you can call a card from hand to rear, so ex extending your battle phase attacks by calling cards from your hand during the battle phase. Um, for the most part, you're not really going to worry about any of those skills. So, yeah, you kind of just want the Ezel name and the gift and this pure ride. So three copies is enough. So we are running four copies of Battlefield Storm Sagramore. So Battlefield Storm Sagramore's skill is when it's placed from hand, you can Soul Blast 1, draw a card, and then you call a card from your hand to rear guard circle. So the reason this is good is because if you're planning on calling a card anyways, like let's say you ride this, you're planning on calling stuff anyways, so it's basically Soul Blast 1 draw, which is really nice. Uh, if you call this during the battle phase, you can extend your number of attacks. It's just a really good card in general. So after, you know, you ride a Spirit and Ezel, you can just ride Sacramore just to get another gift and get that additional call and then because uh, when you rep, when you call something uh, right after you write it you're still kinda activating the unite effects so it helps proc off unite before you stride so I really do like Sagamore a lot and lastly for our grade threes we're running um, nine no ten of that's the number so we're running three copies of Mox Slash Dragon so I didn't really realize until playtesting with Mox Slash how good of a card this thing is, it's even in premium. So Mox Slash Dragon's skill is when it attacks, you counter boss one, call a card from your hand to the rear guard circle, and this gets 5k. And a lot of the cards in this deck proc from when they're called uh, by hand or called in general. So the fact if you have like a, a Bow Mains or a Vivian or a Henrinis in your hand, you can use this to call out more, or Sagamorph, you can use this to call out more targets and then f increase your number of attacks during the turn. So Mox Slash is just a great card. Definitely should be running Mox Slash in your Gold Paladin deck. It's going to be really sad uh, to see him go for the uh, Ezel build for Standard after Ravenheart comes out because it's just kind of clunky with the Counter Blast use. All right, back to this deck profile. Four copies of basically the win condition, which is Bowmane. So uh, you need to have this in your hand to win, uh, in your opening hand. Or at least the turn you ride to grade two, you have to draw into it. So when it's placed, van or rear, you discard a card from your hand, search for Gareth, call it to rear. And then uh, when on rear guard circle, when this is placed by card effect, it gets 3k. So this has to be placed from hand for its superior call skill. But it's the fact that Bowmanes gives you Gareth right away, so you activate Kirif basically just by getting uh, Bone Mains out, which is really good. Uh, and then you can Superior Ride. 
So four bow mains because you need to see those bow mains. All right, next up, we're only running three copies of Vivian. Uh, only three copies because uh, the card only works from hand. So her effect is when it's placed from hand, you counter blast one, soul blast one. Look at the top three cards of your deck, call a card from among them, put the rest on the bottom of your deck, and then this gets 3k for the turn. So it's really good if you call it with Sacramore. Call it from your hand. It's a 3k, uh, 12k beater on Excel Circle 22. Uh, it helps you call more things. Um, it has an uh, early game, so if you uh, superior ride into Ezel and then you call this on rear, you can call something onto the Excel Circle. If your opponent's still grade one, you can basically abuse them like that. So that's really cool. So, but I'm only running three copies just because of the resource management. And then I'm also running uh, three copies of Henry Knees. So unlike the list that topped, or got second place at World Championship, he was running Canarius. I'm still playtesting with Canarius, but I like the idea where um, in an environment where you have a lot of competitive players who know to counterblast deny you for card effects, uh, it's really smart to run cards that don't need counterblasts or resources. You know, basically, like, you, they can't control your hand unless they're playing, like, Dominate or Renin or, you know what I'm talking about. So, uh, your hand is pretty safe in premium, and uh, if you play Canarius, you discard for a call cost. But with Hemonies, uh his cost is Counterblast and a Soul Blast. So if your opponent Counterblast denies you, it makes it harder to, to use these card effects to fill your field. So Hemonies effect is when it's placed GB1. Uh, you look at the top three cards of your deck, search for one among them, and call it to rear. And then following that, if you have a Vanguard with Gurg in its name, both this unit and the unit called uh, gain 3k. So we do run Gurg G units, so you can get the 3k off, but even if you don't go into the Gurg G units, you can still use its effect, you just won't get the power. So I do like that a lot. Uh, it doesn't have to be called from hand, it can be called from deck, which is really helpful. Um, you know, if you're going to Vivian and then call Henry Nees and Henry Nees calls something else, you can chain out these, you know, combos. And then, um, yeah, other than that, it's just to help you feel the feel, and I really like the card. Uh, I'm not running Wonder Ezel in this variant just because I kind of noticed that the, the card does kind of become a vanilla unless you have it in your hand right from, like, the get-go when you ride Bowmanes. So just to avoid the inconsistency of running vanilla cards, I'm just not going to be running uh, Wonder Ezel in this deck uh, for now. So three copies of Gareth. So I notice a lot of decks are toning down their copies of Gareth just because the card kind of comes vanilla in the late game. So there's not really much else the card can do other than fish out, like, fish out, you know, itself from Bowman's. And a lot of times you do call Bowman's from the deck just to get the 3k off and come a 12k beater. But then you can't use its skill to search out Gareth. So it's kind of like you're just having these Gareth sit in your deck and not really doing anything. And then you draw it and it's a vanilla. So... You basically just need to see it for the superior ride early game. So three is enough where you at least, you know, you won't worry about losing two when, you, um, when you're trying to find it in your deck. And then after that, you know, you really kind of don't need Gareth anymore. But its skill is when it's placed by a card ability, you can kind of boss one and you get the 10k. So it's still really good, really helpful, but I'm toning it down just to make more room for other stuff. So next up is four copies of Listener of Truth Dindrain. Uh, too hot stamp because I'm cool. Wow, well, but I'm not cool enough to get a place at uh, soon. I will. So Dindrin's skill is when it's placed by a card ability, you soul blast one and you need to pick uh, one of two effects. So you can either draw a card or you can counter charge. And if you counter charge, you gain 3k. Uh, no, you don't get the 3k if you draw. Let's get that over with. So or uh, or yes, you have to soul blast if you want to counter charge. That's also a thing that people <laughs> get confused with. So uh, the card's still really good because most likely you're going to be countercharging. You have tons of soul from the superior ride. You're supposed to get the superior ride off. If you don't, it's kind of like the, dark, the deck is pretty dead. Um, and then you get plenty of soul. Uh, so you can soul blast, draw cards. Uh, soul blasting for counter, counter charge is really important to pay costs for more effects. So having a counter charge engine in the deck is really good. And it gets 3k, so it can still either be a 10k booster or a 10k beater. So really good card. And it's not GB restricted, which is really nice. Uh, next up, so little modification compared to the guy, guy's deck. I'm running three stride fodder, just because as, a, you know, if you watched the live stream all the way through, 
Uh, he was having a little trouble during like the second to last turn. He could not stride. And uh, you would think running 10 grade threes, you would have enough stride fodder, but you basically keep calling all your grade threes from your hand so you don't preserve them for stride. So I decided to modify the grade one lineup a little bit just to make enough room to run stride fodders and keep them in the hand so I can consistently stride and still use the grade threes that I'm running for my rear guard circles. So Gore Reduct skill, when it's in hand, you pay the cost for stride. The first skill doesn't really matter because we don't run Gurgit grade threes, but I'll read it anyways. It's when you place it from hand, you reveal a grade three, search your deck for a grade three with Gurgit, add it to your hand, and then you discard a card. Cool. We all know what Stride Fodders do. Next up, uh, I'm only running two copies of Ho-Oh. Um, four copies is cool. Uh, I only like the two just because, like, a lot of the times, you know, you'll you'll ride your Sagamore for the extra rear guard circle, and then you call Ho-Well, and then nothing happens. Stuff like that. But uh, that's pretty rare. Other than that, Dindrain's a pretty good counter charge. You play it and you counter charge and soul charge so and then you got glorious raining which counter charges so i like it at two it kind of keeps it keeps it a little balanced uh, i'm not running um radiant sword gurgit so i'm not worried about getting all those resources super 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 aggressively back uh if i ever for whatever reason want to run radiant sword i would up this up to four just to guarantee the counter blast two soul last four for the 10k to five rear guards and like the 30, 25 to 30, or 50 to 60k to my Vanguard. But um, I'm not like that. So, Hoa's skill is when it's placed on rear, if you have Vanguard Ezel, you counter charge and soul charge. So, I like it at two. And also, it shields only 5k. So, running a lot of those kind of sucks when you got a shield. So, yeah. One Haugen. I'm running one whole Haugen because I like Haugen and I didn't really want to run four stride fodder and I didn't want to run three Hoel. I like the 10k shield and I like Haugen's skill. So if I draw, if I ride it, my, you know, opening ride and I'm going second, which sucks, uh, you know, I can swing and I can get an on hit and call another card. Um, if I put it behind my Vanguard, it's a booster with, a, a you know, a pressure on hit to call a card for more attacks. It's still a really good card in my opinion. I'd run two, but the space is a little tight. Keeping it at one just because the card is fun to use, but it's not like super important for the consistency of the deck, but I still like it a lot. So I'm running one whole Haugen. All right, trigger lineup is basically exactly the same and it's a lot of fun, I love this. So we're running eight fronts, right and then we're running the four crits and then finally the four heals so we're not running draw perfect guards or any perfect guards in this deck at all it's just aggro so basically the idea is you're supposed to be striding while your opponent's at grade two thanks to new stride rules since you'll be on your grade three uh at the beginning of your turn thanks to superior writing so when you build your field with Henry's and vivian you got this whole front row, and then you just get your quad drive off, and you get a bunch of front triggers while your opponent's at grade two, and you just hit them really, really, really hard right in the early of the game. So it's super aggressive. Um, the lack of PGs doesn't really hurt, because when they start catching up, uh, you need the damage anyways to pay for costs. And we have heal triggers for G Guardians if we really need to protect yourself. Um, and then crits because crits deal extra damage. So I'm really liking this trigger lineup a lot. Uh, I might change it after uh, the Miyagi booster comes out. But other than that, I'm actually having a lot of fun with this trigger lineup. Uh, so yeah, I, I really like it. So uh, if you got a thing with like, oh, no PGs equals bad, um, just try it out. See if you like it. If you really want to keep the PGs, um, just go with like eight crit four draw PG and four heal, you can't go wrong with that. All right, on to the G zone. Four copies of, what's your name? Master Swordsman of First Light Gurgit Helios. So this, you're basically striding into this as much as you can throughout the game. 
because um, he has quad drive uh, and his costs are free. Um, so Helios skill is Unite. Uh, act once per turn, you flip a card with the same name as this face up and he gets drive plus one. Easy. So the minute you can, you know, stride into this, you call out Henry Knees or Vivian, proc off, Unite, Act, drive plus one. GB3. This gets 5k for each of your rear guards, and your opponent cannot call grade one or uh, greater cards from hand to the guardian circle uh, during the battle this unit attacks. So PGs are grade zeros now, so that's not really important about the guard restrict as much. Uh, the 5k for each of your rear guards is kind of cool, because if you got one Excel circle and a full rear, that's um, plus 30k instead of 25. You know, that's kind of cool. More Excels, more power. Uh, but more importantly, it's the drive plus one because you want to see all those fronts uh, and crits and stuff. And also just like getting more hand from quad drive is also really nice. So yeah, and then um, run four because you want to do that twice. And also we're running Heavenly Law for more power after you use those two. Here's Heavenly Law. Holy Sword of Heavenly Law Gurgit. So Heavenly Law is still a really good card. Uh, Heavenly Law's skill is Counter Boss 1 or Act once per turn. Counter Boss 1. Choose a face down copy of this card, turn it face up, Femur G Zone. And for the rest of the turn, this unit gets auto, red text. Uh, unite when this attacks, you look at the top seven, choose one from among the seven, call it, and then you shuffle the rest back. And then its other skill, auto, red text. Uh, during your turn, all of your units get plus 2k for each face up Gurgit in your G Zone. So if you got four of these, you know, that's two, four, six, eight, one more because you face up, 10. Or flip face up for cost, 10. Uh, if you do it twice, you know, plus 6K. So it is a potential finisher. You don't go into this super often, but it's still a really good card to have. I still love this card. I loved it the minute it came out. The discard was kind of weird, but I got over it. And yeah, I really like Heavenly Law a lot. So it's staying. All right, because we got a Nezzle deck, we're going to be running Ezel G units. So two copies of Absolution Lion King Mithril Ezel. So skill is act once per turn. Combo plus one, choose a face down copy of Absolution Lion King Mithril Ezel from G Zone. Turn it face up. Uh, and then if your heart's Ezel, you unlock all your locked rear guards. Um, that's not really important right now, but it may be since the leaders came back when Link Joker chaos decks might no they're not going to be relevant anyways um so it gets rid of all your locks and then the important skill you look at the top five call one from among the five and then this unit and the unit called gain power equal to the base of the unit so if you called Kerf, i guess if you called Kerf, you get this gets plus five that gets plus five so hopefully you call like a grade three and like plus 12 plus 12 you know Basically, so if you can't really do anything else and need a board, you can go into Mithril and it fills up, you know, your face up G zones to get to GB8 and blah blah blah. So I uh, still like the card, but I'm only running it at two. All right, two copies of Glorious Raining, a potential finisher. So Glorious Raining skills unite when this attacks. You kind of blast one, flip a copy of itself face up, choose two of your rear guards, put them on the bottom of your deck, and then you look at the top seven cards of your deck. And for each face-up card in your G-Zone, you call a card to a rear guard circle from among those seven. So if you got four face-up, you call four things. Uh, and then continuing on to finish its skill, uh, if you called three or more rear guards through this skill, you can counter charge one and soul charge one. So you're repaying its cost and you get the soul, uh, which can be used to pay costs for the Dindrain you called or the Henrenes you called. So, uh, And then because you got Excel circles, you can swing with those excels and then put them back and then call more things back to the excel circles for more you know stuff and then front triggers and crits and fun times glorious rain really good card a lot of value now i'm running one copy of the gb8 celtus winner so celtus winner's skill is um when it attacks gb8 unite uh you pick four of your rear guards uh and now we got excels so you can pick the excel circles too and they get uh, at the end of the battle that they attacked or boosted, you look at the top two cards, choose one from among it, call it, and it gets 5k. So that's really cool because you can 
swing with the rear guard that's not an excel circle and then after it attacks use its skill to go to the top two and you call a card and you can call it to an excel circle and then you, it gets 5k so now it, it swings for even more power and you can just you can abuse the same Excel circle or you can abuse multiple Excel circles. So I like Celtis Winner a lot as a finisher. Uh, it could basically guarantee a lot of attacks that are above the 20, 20k range just because of Excel circle's existence. So I like it. And then finally, one copy of Xeroth Dragon of Zenith Peak Ultima. So Ultima's skill is Ultimate Shrine. You have to have a Three car you have to have three cards face up in your G zone, and you have to discard a copy of your Vanguard to pay its cost. So once you stride into it, uh, if you don't win that turn, your entire G zone goes away. Uh, and then its skill is when it's placed, counter blast two, search your deck for four cards. Two of them are called the rear, and then the other two are put on top of your deck. So two are gonna be good you know, attackers and the other two are going to be triggers. So your opponent shuffles the deck and you put the last two cards on top of your deck. So basically two crits. So that's why we run the two crits. Or four crits. So you can put two of them on top. Uh, and then, uh, for the rest of the turn, uh, all triggers that you reveal during your drive check are applied to all of your rear guards. So it means the rear guards in these columns are going to be bigger than your Excel circles. And if you have multiple Excels, you're basically going, okay, swing, Crit, everything gets 10k. Another crit, everything gets 10k. So you get minimum 20k to all of your rear guards, which is really good. Um, if your opponent's at three damage and you really have no other way to get, you know, to win, you go on Ultima and then you have like one, two, three, four uh, units, five your Vanguard. They know it's going to be two crits, so they're gonna you're gonna swing and you got five attacks, four or five attacks that will deal your damage, deal your opponent three damage if it hits. So, a lot of pressure. Ultima's really good as a finisher, so I really like the card. Uh, it's kind of weird just because you do only run three Uzzles, but the idea is since we run four Sagamore, if we ride the Sagamore, we can keep the other one in the hand, or get another one hand, and then use that to pay costs for Ultimate Strike. So it's still possible. On to the G-Guardians. I am running three copies of Slimy Flare, and one copy of Elise. So, uh, my issue with Elise, I don't know why they reprinted her in the Revival set. It really should have been Slimy Flare. Slimy Flare is such a good generic gold palette in G-Guardian. I don't think Elise is that good in my opinion. So Elise's skill, I'll go on Elise first. GB1, uh, choose a face down uh, G-Guardian from your G-Zone, turn it face up, kind of boss one if I didn't say that already. When this is placed on Guard Circle, look at the top two cards, choose one from among them, call it to Guard Circle, the other goes to the bottom. If the guard is successful, uh, the unit that was placed onto the guardian circle from your deck can be moved uh, to a rear guard circle. So if the card is moved, it's on place effects, don't activate, so it's just vanilla. Uh, the card was really good with uh, Golden Holy Sword Gurgit, just because you could call a trigger, move it to rear, and then uh, Gurgit could use it to intercept. So adding more guard during your guard step, really good. With this deck, it's like, it's kind of whatever. It's just kind of like, oh, I'm, I might want an extra rear guard for my next turn to push. I don't know what rear guard or get. Well, let's find out. Oh, cool, top two. Look, it's Gareth. Cool, now I got an 8K booster. Sure. Or, oh, cool, it's Henry Knees, I guess. I'll just move it somewhere. It's a 9K vanilla. That's why I don't really like running more than one. I might, you know, the only reason I might run two is if, you know, I want a GB8 faster, but the deck really doesn't need that. Slamy Flare, the better card. Let's go into him. So Slamy Flare's skill, Slamy Flare's skill is choose one of your rear guards, put it on the bottom of your deck. When this is placed, you look at the top five cards, and then choose two from among them with different grades and call them the Guardian Circle. Wow, that's really good. You know why? It's because triggers and grade ones have bigger shields in V series. So now, instead of like what Max used to be a 41k shield, you got 27, 37. 52, wow, you can have a 52k base shield uh, just from paying its cost if you get a grade 1 and a trigger. That's pretty, pretty good, considering, like, you know, you don't run PGs, so you want big shield. So I like Slamy Flare. Also, like, if you play Elise, I'm going to flip a Slamy Flare for skill, so I like to have two more Slamy Flares in case I need the big shield. 
Um, if I were running PGs, it'd be really funny to go into Slimy Flare, look at the top five, see Mark, call up to guard, and then you just PG that way. That's one way to get over guard restrict, like Ichikishima, and, oh wait, you can't even G guard G. Forget I said anything, I'm stupid. Okay, uh, it's kind of like how you get over guard restrict with, like, Zoa, for example, or, I don't know, what else guard restricts? Um, that's a kind of important. Not really much since grade PGs are grade zeros now. So, yeah, basically just Zoa. You can go into Slangy Flare, find PG, stop the 9999 attack that on hit auto win, and then that's it. But, uh, yeah, I just like being really aggro, so I'm not running PGs. That's my G Guardian lineup. That was the deck. Uh,. Things are going to be changing soon with the deck, just because Miyagi is coming out. I'll let you guys get updated with that later. But other than that, the way you play this deck is you ride any grade 1, ride Bowman's, use its skill to search out Gareth, put all those into soul, superior ride Ezel. Hopefully your opponent's still at grade 1 while this is all happening. You get your Excel gift, you know. Put that down. You uh, make a field out of something. Just make it super simple, like call that whatever. You you know you're you're gonna be smart when you're making your field. And then the following turn, you uh, you while your opponent goes at grade two, since you're at a grade three beginning of your turn, you discard for stride, and you just go into Helios while they're at grade two, and then you unite and you flip a copy face up, and then you quad drive them. And then they can't G-Guard or anything, because they're at grade 2. They can PG, but like, they, they're they at grade 2. They probably don't have much hand advantage at that point. So, abuse your opponent. Go first. Um, if you can't go first, uh, do the thing anyways. And yeah, that's pretty much the deck. So I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you have any more comments or questions or concerns, leave them in the comment section. And... Yeah, that's pretty much it. Uh, go on inkgaming.com and buy playmats. Bye.